And I'll never forget, Chuck Norris goes, hey, Bob, you like that girl? Said, yeah. And he puts his hand out like this. And goes, it's hard as a kid because you have to be in this adult world. I'm getting pulled out of school all the time. I couldn't make practice or I had to leave the team. I mean, I was 13. I went to my first nightclub. Everybody's fighting in the police show. Up. And they're like, run! <laughs> police all pull up. They start fighting the police. And I think then the TV went out the window. And that, oh, I knew good enough at that point. I got to go. Hello, and welcome to 90210. I am your host, Jessica Entner, and I'm sitting here with my co-host, Dan Eisenstein. What's up? And a very rowdy and ready to go, <laughs> Bobby Jacoby, who you will absolutely recognize. Robert Jane. Robert Jane. God damn it. Do you go by... Wait. Wait. Do you go, no, no. Wait, hold on. That's that's the first, that'll be the first story. Do, okay. do you go by Robert Jane? Or, I got, yeah, yeah. My whole life. I mean, I only... I, in, your, in my phone, you're Bobby Jacoby. And you'll always be Bobby Jacoby right. to me. Well, you know? let's just tell the audience. Jacoby. I know, I know. A let's little talk about bit it. about Bobby Jacoby because right. the Bobby Jacoby we know was in every fucking 80s sitcom movie. You and your brother were basically the poster children for the 80s. Yeah. So let's just get into the name change. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's go back to the beginning. My name is Robert Jane. Okay. Okay. At school, my whole life, my license, everything. Back in the Late 60s, I want to say. We were living in New York. And my you were born old, in the late 60s. No, I was born in 73. Yeah, okay. So my, my brother, Scott, yeah, Scott. Was, was like seven or eight. And my mom took him on a random audition in New York. And he got the part. And he ended up uh, getting nominated for a Tony. Oh my you know, God. he became a pretty big actor. He did movies with like uh, Jodie Foster. Um, he won an Emmy Award. Do you know that? You know Scott won know. an Emmy? Yeah, he won. But, yeah, I know Scott worked a he lot. He did a movie with uh, Martin Sheen. And Hal Holbrook, he won an Emmy. So my mom, well, he had a different dad. Okay. And his name was Scott Jacoby. Yeah. So my mom said, fuck it. Everybody's Jacoby now. <laughs> like, right? How did your dad feel about that? Your real dad? How did, so he your mom. Was cool. He's fucking Joe Jacoby. He didn't care. He was drinking anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what's cool is, so we knew, like, we were friends with the Travoltas yep. and the Bayos in New York. In fact, Scott's dad, I think they used to have a car dealership or something. Uh -huh. So when we all moved out to LA, because Scott was going to, Scott came out to screen test for Happy Days. Okay. Oh, wow. And he didn't want to screen test because he just won the Emmy. And so they said, well, we have this other part. Scott, your brother. Not Scott, Scott, my Bale. brother. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, yeah. And they said, we have this other part called Fonzie. Mm -hmm. And you can have that part. But then he's like, well, it's one line. He says, oh. hey, in it. Yeah. So he turned it down. <laughs> yeah. And that was the beginning of the long string of the second message, right? <laughs> yeah. So... We all moved out here. Yep. We were living with uh, um, the Bales and the Travoltas. We all kind of lived in West Hollywood right next yep. to each other. And that spawned my sister Susie. And then my brother Billy was in every 80s movie. Just yeah. one of the guys, Cujo, all those things. But there was a time we were all on a TV show, you know? So yep. your older brother started the whole acting thing on a fluke. On a fluke. And then your mom was like, fuck yeah, I want to totally be a stage mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we kidding. were like, we were like, <laughs> Poor New York, even moving out here. Like, you know, my mom was one of those people that, like, she never realized we were all on TV shows and had money. Yeah. Like, even when I got older, me and my brother shared bunk beds at the end of a hallway. Yeah. We didn't even have bedrooms, right. you know. Your I mean? mom, though, was like a legendary Legend. stage mom. Oh, legend. Yeah. She got kicked out of every studio. Oh, I was just uh, joking yeah. when I said that. Oh, oh legendary even stage mom. Oh. She fucking didn't care. Ed Asner, like, at his right, she would say, fuck. You had like in the middle of the sound stage, everybody would freeze and she'd be screaming at him. Jackie Cooper. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, they got into it. He had her removed from uh, Paramount. And meantime, you're working. Like, nobody, <laughs> the funny thing is, your mom had this reputation, but you guys were working the whole time. Oh, it didn't, but, didn't set you back. But, you got, but here's the other thing about it that I learned like, you know, what I learned about my mom, like, it was really embarrassing growing up and all this. Yeah. And everybody, everybody was so proper. But what I learned was like, fuck it. Yeah. If you just walk through that door and you own it, mm -hmm. you won't, you get it. Yep. Right. Which, by the way, that's where I met Faustino. Yeah. You know, I was about eight, and Faustino did a movie with my with my sister Laura. Yeah. Okay. Um, in Hawaii, and of course, my mom used it as a way to get a free vacation. I mean, we brought like ten people and stayed in the one hotel <laughs> yeah. room and yeah, shared yeah. the two beds. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where Jacoby came from. So you know, we you know Jacoby kind of migrated with us through acting and into the professional world. It's kind of weird because at school I was always Jane. Got it. You know. Um, so that's your stage that's name. But the funny stage thing is, name. I've like been friends with you for 
30 years at least, over 35 years. I didn't want you to find me. And I didn't know you were Jane until maybe like 10 or 15 years ago. I swear to God. Well, you've always been really fast. <laughs> Seriously, really fast. though. I mean, like, I've known you for 35 years. <laughs> yeah. And like maybe 15 years ago, I found out your last name was Jane. But let's talk about, you know, working in the 80s and some of the roles yeah. that you had. You, I mean, you were on different strokes. You, what, was your arc on, what was your arc on different strokes? So I was, uh, I was the alcoholic. How old were you? On different strokes. I was Ricky the alcoholic. I was about 13. Um, commercials and movies, five, six, seven years old, whatever. Yeah. And I was on Not Standing for six years. Oh, wow. In fact, Brian was Green. Was Brian went on? That, when you know how he got the role? We had the same agent. Who was your agent? Though? Tony Kelman. Okay. And I wasn't on it as much the last couple of years, and I got into the part. And they were like, look, you know, if you're not going to be able to do the show, you know, you're going to take these other parts. You can't be on the show. So my agent was representing Brian. Yeah. And it he happened the that same way. Part. You guys yeah. did the same you, part. Yeah, he played the same role as me. You yeah. actually Brian look Cunningham. like yeah. Brian Austin Green and Jason Hervey had Because of the cousin. divorce? Maybe. That's kind of where... <laughs> Am I right? A little I don't. Bit. I don't see it. I know. I see. I see, I see Bobby. I, see Bobby. I, see I know. Well, yeah. it's Bo okay. Bobby, yeah. baby. Yeah. Okay. When I see Bobby, I see Iron Eagle. I'm going to keep this thing Iron on track Eagle because I know you too. Yeah. Iron Eagle. When so you started wait, acting, so I'll give you the quick yeah. take. So, like, you know, not slanting was a big story. It was like six years, right? And then I spent a couple of years on different strokes. On and off, but a lot of people saw it. <laughs> Jason Irvey was, was on, on that it. episode. One yeah. of your episodes. For those yeah. of you who don't know, Different Strokes was a very, very popular show in the 80s, a Norman Lear show. We have these amazing. Was it Different Strokes? We got in so much trouble. But wait, so Different Strokes was Embassy. And so Silver Spoons, Different Strokes, Who's the Boss? Yeah. We all filmed on the same soundstage and yeah. we'd be rehearsing. Was that Sunset Gower? No, we were at Universal. We got kicked, who's we the all boss? Got, we got kicked off of Universal. Because who's the boss? Eventually, was at Sunset Gower. We all moved. Married with children was. There. We all moved yeah. because we used to have these fire extinguisher fights, and we would take them out of all the sound stages, and we we're all fighting with the water, Alfonso, everybody. Yeah. And then I think Ricky like rode his bike through the Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. And they were like, "That's it. Yeah. You guys aren't going to be oh here anymore." God. So you're working on different strokes, and Billy, your brother, is working on Silver Spoons. Silver Spoons. And you guys are going to work at the same spot like every day. Yeah, different days because yeah. we were like recurring. But it was wild. Know? It was wild, man. Yeah. It was interesting. You know, like, you know, and that's when I started getting in trouble. Like Gary Coleman, it was his birthday. Yeah. You know, I was young. I was 13 and Jason was like 14 and Jason was always, we were always getting in trouble. Yep. And um, we went to Santa Barbara for his birthday. Yeah. And I'll never forget, we met, Jason met a girl and I don't know what happened, but we missed the whole birthday party yeah. and I'll never forget Gary's dad knocking on the door like this. Yeah. We were like 14 <laughs> and we were going back on the train and, Gary wouldn't talk to us. Nobody. I never did the show again. Okay, so I have questions. I'll, yeah, I have questions. So when you, you, how old were you when you first started acting? Five. Okay. I did a movie. Okay. So what was the first movie? It was called uh, "Walking Through the Fire" with Bess Armstrong. Okay. So here's my question yep. because you already just told me your mom was a stage mom and you yep. got into this and it was like, okay, did you like it? Because it was like going to work. And how was that? you know, going to school on set. I mean, they're obviously, you know, fire. So it's interesting. Fights. It's hard as a kid because you have to be in this adult world mm -hmm. and you have to be on time and with adults. But it also, you know, it taught me a lot about professional etiquette later, you know, for other things later in my career. It also kind of led, I think it leads to, for kid actors, some of the rebellious nature. Like, for sure. I mean, I was 13. I went to my first nightclub. Right, but do you think you know? that's rebellion because you were a child actor or rebellion because you were in Los Angeles and had access? No, I think there's something about, like, you know, you're getting pulled out of school all the time. Right. You know, you can't be on a football team. I, I can't tell you how many times. I mean, I was a sports guy. Yeah. I couldn't make practice or I had to leave the team. Um, I remember I was on uh, the Glendale Bears. It was actually <laughs> a city team. And I trained all summer. I played three games and then I had to leave. And um, you get a disassociation, I think, with that life. And then on the other hand, like, you know, Alfonso, my brother, Billy, you know, mm -hmm. he was four years older. I'll never forget, they took me to this place called Club Hollywood, mm -hmm. which was like the spot back in the, I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. It was a nightclub. Yep. I saw piles of stuff you're yeah. not supposed to see yeah. at 13, yeah, man. Yeah, we all, we all. <laughs> it was wild, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I, I mean, my kid's 16, I, he's like, I can't even imagine him right. going out. And, like, you think about that. I mean, I think about um, all the people around that were not good people. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Feldman, you know. Right. You know, it's funny. Corey Feldman did a show called Bad News Bears with my brother when we were young. Yep. Like, 
Um, so I became friends with Corey Feldman pretty young. Scott Grimes. I knew Alyssa from Who's the Boss. We were all like a little group. I know there's like with with the child actors because mm-hmm. you guys are on the same sets yep. and you it's like school. Like I mean, you you migrate towards the people that are your age too. So you you kind of all grew up together. But Bobby, it was like knew, your school. Bobby knew everybody. Right, right, yeah. right. I was I'm on the saying, child actor scene and I was friends with Dave Faustino. Yeah. Like Bobby knew everybody. But there's, you know, there's there's, there was, he worked so much. And there were some kids that went to specific schools when they weren't working but too. But I, I think it's because you worked yeah. so much. Yeah. You and you worked on, I mean, Bobby was on pretty, I mean, no, but you're right. There was on certain shows, but you were on, you did an episode of the A team, an yeah. episode of TJ Hooker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Episode, I mean, you did an episode on almost every show. I remember doing the A team when I was so young. I didn't know what was going on. And I'll never forget Mr. T and Murder. Rock, yeah, they didn't like each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just was doing like this little scene where I still up. I don't even remember. And I remember it took like three and a half hours because they wouldn't come out of their dressing room before the other. Oh my god, <laughs> that's hysterical. It's not funny. Yeah, that's. But you but- know, it was a wild time. Like, like I mean, Corey Haim. Like we had wild times. I mean, when Feldman and Haim did a uh, Dream a Little Dream. Oh man, now I'm License thinking. I'm, I'm thinking of, like I, was, I went to Stand By Me premiere with Will and all those guys. Yep. So, but it got nuts when we were like 15. You know, that's right. when we, got yeah. little, we we were on this traveling basketball team to, to the whole country. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. And then I'll go back to the Dream a Little Dream premiere. I'll never forget. There's a guy named Henry Penzi we all know we grew up with. And he used to organize with uh, Michael Mears. Yeah, I know Mike. Yeah, they used to do these basketball games. Yep. And I got this call. I said, Bobby, where are you, man? I said, what do you mean? He's like, it's my house. I was like, all right. So I drove over. I was 16. Red Jeep. Before the red jeep, when I had the shark, I didn't know you then. I knew uh, you with the red jeep. Uh, I had the shark. Yeah. My dad wrecked the car the night before I got it. It looked like a shark because the lights were down and there was a hanger in it. Oh my god! Ask Rainbow about it. Okay. So, so I go to this guy's house. He's like, "What are you doing, man? We're leaving. We got to go to LAX." I go, "What do you mean LAX? We got to be in New York for the basketball game." I was like totally flaky back then. Right. So what do I do? They're like, "Come on." So I just rolled. Yeah. No luggage, no clothes. Went to New York. We ended up staying for two weeks. Yeah. We went up to Boston. We had another game in Connecticut. <laughs> so I said, F it. I said, Mom, she's like, stay. You know, she sent me like 40 bucks. I was, yeah. I was washing my underwear in the sink of these <laughs> really nice hotels. It was really weird. And then we go, we're like, we have these four days off. Who's on this basketball team, by the way? Oh, man. Who used to be on Silk? All the actors, man. Uh, what's his name? With Superman, Dan. The Dean Kane. Dean Kane. The guy from Gladiators. The big guy. I don't remember. A lot of people. Like, yeah. like famous people. So it was but, like Battle of the Stars, but basketball. Yeah, so okay. we would play like the high school, oh, Chris Nicoletti. We would play a combination of the high school faculty and their varsity team. And we won most of the time. We were a pretty good team. So well, we Dean Kane's a, you know, he was a college a athlete. Yeah. No, no, we were yeah. ballers, man. Yeah. So I, we had these four days that were downtime. And of course, like, you know, all the actors knew all the hoodlums. So there were these, this guy, Teddy, who had two brothers. And they were all bigger than the next one. They lived yeah. in Dorchester. Oh, God. I never heard of Dorchester. <laughs> So like, hey, let's go up to Dorchester for like yeah. four days. I'm yeah. like, that sounds cool. So we get up there and my buddy, Henry, they're like, we're going back to New York. I go, we just got to Dorchester. He's yeah. like, and Teddy's like, you can stay with me. It's all good. Yeah. I never seen anything like it. All of his clothes had tags on them. I mean, it was clear these guys were doing something. Yeah. Like so they leave. They're like, hey, let's go to Boston for the night. We'll show it to you. I'm like, great. I'm 16. Let's go to nightclubs. We go there. I don't know what happened. I'm drinking, whatever. Teddy's brother, Leslie, turns around and like punches the window of this car at like 2 a.m. And these guys get out and everybody's fighting and the police show up. Huh? I'm like, oh my God, I'm with these guys. I don't know. The fucking cops are here. With no cell phones. Right. Not what I do. And they're like, run! <laughs> I'm like, what? So next day, I'm running down yeah. the alley with these fucking brothers. I don't know. We get to the end of the alley. The police all pull up. They start fighting the police, <laughs> punching them in the face. Yeah. So I hide under this car. They all get arrested. I come out from under this car. I like have five bucks in my pocket. I have no cell phone. Nowhere to stay. Nobody Nowhere to stay. Yeah. Dude, I had to wait till like five in the morning till they got out of jail. And what was crazy is Boston. <laughs> you waited. I, I had to just, it. I didn't know what to do. I can't call my mom. But what's crazy is they just got let go. Cause like yeah. in Boston, it was like, they all knew yeah, each other. They just hated each yeah. other yeah. growing up. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Let's that kind of shit happen all yeah. The time. I feel like you find things like well, that to get. I mean, I yeah, like you have the personality. You have the dream a little dream party. Let's go back to I, the dream a little dream. So, so we go to the premiere, and this is like I, Ricky was there uh, with Corey, Corey, 
Uh, By the Kevin way, I had Tellis. crushes on all of these guys we, when I was a yeah. child. We, yeah. we yeah. were, I, I was like at the top floor. I don't know what happened, but everybody got, was drinking a lot. And the next thing I know, the fridge goes out the window. How old are you, 17? I don't remember. But probably young, yeah. And then I they throw the chair out the window. This is like on a Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By now, the press is down the hall. They're yeah, knocking yeah, on the door. Yeah. The cops are coming down there, right? And I think then the TV went out the window. And that, oh, I knew good enough at that point. I got to go. Yeah. You, so you were, I feel like a lot of the stories that you have, Alfonso, you were with hanging out with Alfonso a lot. At that point, because Alfonso was hanging out with my brother. Yeah. You know, Alfonso was cool. They were older than me, you right. know. And this is Alfonso Ribeiro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Alfonso yeah. was a great guy, man. He was always like the steady one. Yeah. Okay, guys. Like, let's. Let's be cool. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. seems like that. But yeah, he yeah. was older. He was like I said. I was my friends were really younger. Like um, it was really Scott, Jason, all those guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was that was. The, I mean, I these were all the kids that were in all of the <clears> movies <throat> in the eighties. I mean, it was it was definitely. Yeah. I started working on all those movies like Tremors. Tremors. And, yeah. And I mean, every anytime I tell anybody I know you, the thing that always comes up is that you were Eddie Panetti. That was a big oh, one. Oh, one of yours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people remember that Eddie Panetti. I yeah. almost got Jason's role. Who really? We were at, we were screen testing. It was just me and him. Yeah. It was a um, what did they call it? It wasn't a pilot. It was like a pilot presentation. Yeah, mm. it was just me and him. Yeah. Oh, there were so many also ran. There were so many also ran like opportunity. Yeah. I was at network for our house. Remember that show with Chad? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know my brother got Goonies. Billy. Did he? Yeah. No way. Billy I got could see it. We we're at Goonies. Stephen walks out. He's got his arm around yeah. Billy. Yeah. For a mouth for Corey's Yeah. Role. In front of everybody. Oh, he would have been a great mouth. He got it. And then at some point, I guess he goes, wait, is your brother Scott Jacoby? Steven. Uh -huh. he goes, yeah. He goes, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Apparently my brother, uh, Steven, had split up with his wife at that point. Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Amy Irving. Yeah. And Scott. Your Scott brother. became a friend. Oh. oh, boy. There it goes. Billy didn't get good news. Yeah. <laughs> Politics <laughs> that of funny? Hollywood. I love it. I That's love a it. true story. I love it. That's horrible. I forgot that Amy Irving and Steven Spielberg were together. That's horrible. I feel like, though, Not anytime, for a minute. <laughs> anytime anybody, like, in Hollywood whose name, like, especially if it was, like, an 80s or 90s child actor, you yeah. knew them, you have a story about them. Oh, yeah. You knew everybody. And then... We so, know a lot of them from New York, too. Like, Artie Robb, I don't know yeah. if Artie, or, like, um, um, Seth Green. We know Seth, from New York. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I was in a movie with Seth, and that's pretty much how I met you. But, so, when did you meet Dave Faustino? When he was um, when he's doing that movie in Hawaii, he was eight. Yeah, with my sister. Okay, outlaw posse. So so Robert Gavin, who I was in Pump the Volume. With, I remember, yeah. I remember okay. Robert. And uh, Dave and a guy named Hiro and Bobby were in a rap group. Gavin so, used to drive the poo poo car. He was the only car. one who yeah. had a license, yeah. and it was this old little Chevy Chevette yeah. with yeah. really bald tires, and he would drive us everywhere. Yeah, and then after Pump the Volume, he got the shirt pal. Got the Sherpa. Yeah. The what? So he had a black Jeep and license plate with Sherpa. Sherpa? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So we had this rap group. And I mean, it sounds ridiculous until you, you realize we got signed to uh, Motown Records. Oh, my God. And then we somehow we ended up on Ruthless Records, which was Easy E's <laughs> label. Yep. 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 And if you can imagine these four white kids, at, we would always go there and they always had the guns and they were like these gangster rappers yeah. walking around. It was crazy. So wait, who was that? Who was it? Outlaw was, Posse. So it was, was Bobby and Dave and Robert Gavin and uh, my friend Hiro. And this was before Ballistics and that so it was album. Before yeah. Ballistics. And Ballistics. before Hooligans. Yes. So wow. that's okay, how I know that's... Bobby. Was so I they was were in... taking their chances on. <laughs> So I was in We were taking our Lion. chances being in the office. We were Jerry Heller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. 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 Wow. We're like, we're not with the white guy. Oh my we're god. We're not with the white guy. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I know Bobby. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. Okay. So what happened with that career? Did you guys make uh, they a record? Did one record and then that was kind of it. Yeah, we did a record. There were a lot of posses in the 90s. No, there we, got, the we got in trouble. Posse, the we got in trouble. Guys. We got in trouble, man. You know, we did a couple gigs, you know, like one was like in Compton. Oh my God. And, and that went pretty good. Karis one was down there. It was cool. That's yeah. how we met Karis one. Yeah. And then we went down to San Diego and I can't tell you the story, but we, we just gotten a lot of trouble. I think it was just too much. I don't oh, know if we were good, good rappers. <laughs> Didn't matter. Didn't matter. It was marketable. They, yeah, yeah. Didn't matter. So, okay. Now that you, you finished the Eddie Panetti story. So you, you were Eddie Panetti. And I have to say, 
Eddie Panetti, from what I remember, was the asshole on the Wonder Years. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, you do (laughs) you do have a little there's definitely small wonder. a, a, a you bully. Want small wonder? Oh yeah. my God, yeah. I loved that show so much. So, but you man. have like a little bit of a bully look. I like this. So how did I, that, did I you did get all those shows. I don't know. I, you know, um, I think Marsha told me once, you know, Marsha Harvey said, you'll never be the lead guy. You're the friend. <laughs> no, but you look like the troublemaker. Yeah. I like that. He was, he was always. <laughs> well, he looks yeah. like, that, like right? yeah. I don't know. I just, you know, I remember, I just always, it was easy. Like, um, I was doing this movie called Meet the Applegates. Yeah. Mm. It was Michael. Michael Lehman did Heathers. You remember that movie, yes, Heathers? Yeah, yeah. Of course. So this was his next movie. Yep. Uh, just not as good. And it was with uh, Ed Begley Jr., Stalker Channing. I went to the premiere. Coleman. You invited me to the premiere. I, I remember yeah. this movie. I was a cockroach. Yeah. 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 But, I, but here's an example. I was on that movie and I got in so much trouble that um, this guy comes up to me. He was the first AD. He goes, hey, man, dude, you can really be a dick. I said, uh, he goes, it's okay, though, because here's why. I'm prepping for this movie, and you have to be in it. It's called Tremors. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, listen, just come to L.A., meet the director. And literally, I went to L.A. I came back to L.A. after the film, and mm-hmm. I walked in the door, and I met Ron Underwood, who directed mm-hmm. Tremors. And after, like, five minutes, he goes, do you want the part? You can do it. And that's why I got Tremors. So let's talk. I want to talk it's about crazy. Tremors, but before that's we do, nuts. when you say you got in a lot of trouble, like, what kind of things were you doing to get into trouble? You don't remember? I want to know. I think we were just acting out a lot. You know, look, like, first of all, we were 15. We would, we were driving. When I did Meet the Applegates, I drove there. Yeah. I didn't have a license. It's 50 hours. You know, we just, it was nuts, man. We went to clubs. We used to, you know, be able to buy alcohol. There were there were bad people around. that yeah, just weren't yeah. good people who had bad intentions. Yeah. Luckily, they were always targeting, like, your friend or the guy that nobody knew that wasn't yeah. famous. Yeah. I mean, not luckily, I mean, it's terrible, but, you know. You know, the funny thing, Bobby, when I think about you, the funny thing is you were (laughs) always kind of like getting in trouble or kind of a troublemaker, but had this sweet, sweet, sweet side to you. You were good. It's almost like- It's just the funny stuff. You know, the funny thing is you're Uh -uh. kind of like the opposite of Eddie Haskell. Uh Because Eddie Haskell (laughs) was trying to like put on this like sweet persona, (laughs) but was kind of a dick deep down. I totally know what you're talking about. Bobby was kind of like would put on this like asshole persona, but sweet deep down, he was like this sweet, sweet guy. I I speak that language. I I get that. We were good friends. Like, you know, I'll say this. We we all made some strong bonds. Are you still friends with a lot of people from that era? You know, I don't talk to them as much. I mean, if I see that Seth actually lives right behind me, Seth Green, you Mm -hmm. know, and we reconnected, and we have a really great relationship. Um, Dan, David, and all the guys. I don't see them as much. Right. You know? That's just life. I have a different career now. Um, We're going to talk about that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious, though, about the acting side, mm. because I did, you kind of dodged the question just a slightly bit, well, but did you ever like it? Like, was it something that you enjoyed oh, doing? Yeah. And you were clearly a natural at it, but did you, like, so you I guess the question, so here's did you the take thing. it seriously, and then what happened as an adult. Well, something happens. Can't. Like, when you go from, like, a kid to, like, an yeah. adult, like, you know, you go from just saying words or remembering how to say a line to, like, hey, you have to kind of learn how to act. And that transition's hard. Yeah. Um, I ended up studying at a studio. Um, there's a woman named Ivana Chubbuck. Mm-hmm. She's pretty well known. And I was with her for, like, 12 years. We became very, very good friends. We traveled together. And that was really fun, you know? Yeah. But what happened then was I started to realize, like, wow, the, this studied sort of approach to acting, you know, all of a sudden you're going out for the pizza guy, you know, or you're going out for these roles and it's like, well, wait a second, now I want to be an actor. And back then it wasn't as easy to make your own stuff like it is today. Of course. You know, you couldn't just get a video camera and Mm -hmm. put it up on YouTube and do something, you know? Um, And I think that was disheartening. And also you get parts, you weren't getting paid, you know? Right. It changed a lot. I mean, I remember when they went to cable and you get a you know, all of a sudden you're getting a thousand bucks well, for we, they, we just went through this runs. again. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about Tremors, though. Um, okay. Because that was, I mean, that really became kind of a breakout thing for you and turned into oh, yeah. some, you know. Well, you know, it actually right. bombed in the movie theaters. Yeah. It was so bad. They didn't do this. There was a sequel. We were going to go to Australia. Paul Hogan was going to be in it. Mm-hmm. And they never, they never shot the sequel because it bombed so bad. They yeah. shot these really bad. Universal Home Video said, we'll do like. Low budget sequels only. Yep. So they who, never shot the real sequel. Who even was though, the star of that? I remember uh, that. Kevin Bacon. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fred and the Ward. Things that came Fred out. Ward, yeah. Fred Ward. That's who Michael I was trying Gross, to remember. Michael Gross, Reba McIntyre. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. But you were great in it. And Thanks, there were giant you worms, really were, right? Yeah. Yeah. Giant worms, yeah. You want to hear a fun fact? It was the last studio film before CGI. Oh, wow. 
The last practical effect, big film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a good piece of trivia Galen right Hurt there. Kaelin Hurd produced it. Who? Kaelin Hurd. She had just broken up with James um, Cameron. Okay. It's interesting as you're talking too, is that you have so, like, as you're saying, like kids in the industry become a little bit adultified and they have to like know how all the players and how it all works. I'm 50. Well, now you are, but like you knew all these people <laughs> back then. You know but, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah. you were paying attention. That's oh, not things right, that most kids kind of like, you know what I mean? But, like that's where the... Anyway, Tremors became a cult classic. Yeah. I mean, and like, are you, I mean, do you go to like autograph shows for that? Do you, you know, I can never get into the autograph. I, I went to two of them. Yeah. And like the idea of signing my autograph for a kid with his last five bucks, like, yeah. <laughs> so when I go to, I mean, I'm not yeah. criticizing anybody yeah. who does it. Yeah, yeah. So I would just sign up for free and, you know, yeah. get really mad the other actor, yeah, yeah. the guy from Hellraiser, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was screaming at me because yeah. I was giving away free pictures. Sure. I'm like, this is not for me, you know? Yeah. But, um, Tremors has been really interesting. You yeah. know, we had a huge 25-year reunion in um, um, Louisville, yeah. Kentucky, movie theaters. And then last year, the guy who um, created Game of Thrones, R.R. R. Martin, uh -huh. is that his name? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes, the, R. The, R. I mean, the writer, yeah. R.R. Yeah. R. R. Martin. Something, yeah. whatever like So that. he owns these movie theaters in New Mexico, and he's a huge Tremors fan. Oh, my God. So we had this big thing. Yeah. Uh, last year, yeah. we all came out. They screened the Tremors movies the whole weekend. And hundreds and hundreds of people for it. Is it Comic-Con? Does Tremors go to Comic-Con too? Is that a thing there? Never been to Comic-Con. Okay. No, which yeah. is weird. Yeah. But what was cool about the event that you brought up is I got to bring my kids. Yeah. Like, That's awesome. They had no idea. Yeah. Like There was literally a line of like 150 people for all They must have loved that. They did. You know, yeah. it was pretty neat. How I old mean, were they? Going back on that. Uh, 16, 18. You know, I didn't even think about that angle you know and you know what's funny is i the last time i saw ella your daughter yeah. was maybe like four or five years our ago. our daughters go to the same college our daughters go to the same college okay. but i've you know I, I first of all bobby met his first wife i was in a class at smc and i was having a birthday party and i and i was in class with this girl, and i invited this girl to my birthday party and bobby met her there and ended up being his first wife mother is there with my girlfriend too you are yeah, Kendra. Kendra? I was just about to say it was a Kendra. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> my so first one. but I ran into Ella. I was with my kids and uh, I saw her at a Baskin Robbins. I'm like, hey, Ella. She, I think I just embarrassed the shit out of her. But um, that must be pretty cool. You know, look, you've done, you have a good body of work. Yeah. You've worked a shit ton. Yeah. You know, you can catch you probably on Nick at Night or whatever, where they play these, you know, Freebie <laughs> or. Pluto. God. You know, one of those your free kid, It must be cool for your kids <laughs> to... I probably had the most fun, though, making movies when I got older. Yeah. You know, yeah. Can't Hardly Wait. Was can't fun, Hardly Wait, yeah. You know? um, did you ever see that, that movie? Had, oh, yeah. That had yeah. Ha that literally had half of our high school in it. You know, I worked I mean, on the production was, side oh, really? of yeah. Can't Hardly Wait. For, I read yeah. a, a Can't Hardly Wait story for you. That was a fun movie. Yeah. Ethan yeah. Embry. Yeah, Ethan Embry. And, uh, Seth Green was in it. Seth yeah. yeah. Everybody was in yeah. it. Yeah. Everybody was in it. The Forgetting Sarah Marshall guy was the watermelon guy. Uh, Jason, Jason Siegel. Siegel. Yeah. 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 Um, I love those movies when you look back and you're like, holy shit, look who was in that movie. Yeah. Like Fast Times is one of those. You're like, oh my God. And, and then the thing is, you've had like two other very successful careers beyond yeah. acting. I mean, at some point you got into contracting and you were like Real remodeling same. every. Well, I was looking at my country. brother. My brother Scott, um, you know, because he was really successful yeah. and, you know, but all of a sudden he wasn't making movies. So he started uh, buying real estate and flipping it. And like as you, as time went on in acting, even to, look look at today, yeah, you know, they have these one day guest stars. Uh huh. It didn't used to be like it used to be. You got a guest star, right? You were like, hey man, I got some money in the bank. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so he gave me the opportunity to start doing stuff with him on the side all those years uh -huh. while I was still doing acting and all that. And I was still making movies, but I just wasn't making money. Yep. Okay. In fact, one of the one of the last guest star roles I did, where I got paid, was with uh, was Walker Texas Ranger. Yeah. Forget I was friends with um, the stuntman. I know him, and yeah. we were in Dallas. And he goes, "Hey, Bobby, what are you doing?" I go, "What do you mean?" Like I had to be up at work like seven. He goes, "I don't care what you're doing. Go down the star. Go downstairs. Walk outside. There's going to be a limousine. Get in the limousine." I'm like, "Come on." He's like, "Do it." And I'm trying to be good. I'm like, yeah. "Look, you know, I'm stunning." He's like, "Be downstairs." So I go downstairs. I'm like, "Okay, what do you want to do?" I open the door, and Chuck Norris is in the limo. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'd never met him. It's my buddy and Chuck Doris. Okay. Yeah. And we're in the limo. I'm like, okay. I say, hey, Bobby. I say, hey. So we go to the gentleman's club. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget his wife called him while we're driving. And he's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> um, 
And we went to the gentleman's club, Chuck Norris, all those things you read on the internet. It's real. Because we went to a restaurant afterward, and I'll never forget. And this is when I was not dating anybody or married to anybody. Yeah. There was a waitress there, and I'll never forget. Chuck Norris goes, hey, Bobby, you like that girl? I said, yeah. And he puts his hand out like this, and he goes, <laughs> oh, my God. She walks over. She, they, I guess they knew each other. because She goes, hey, Chuck. He goes, hey, this is my friend Bobby. I can't take him home. Can you drive him home for me? <laughs> she goes, sure. I get off in 15 minutes. Yeah. I like it. Great story. I'll tell you the rest offline. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but... Chuck Norris is real. Yeah, it's like all it. real. Of course. He's yeah. Real. That was Chuck Norris. Come on. I love Chuck Norris. Yeah. But anyway, that rolled into real estate and then it got into um, finance. Some friends of mine were working in lending. Yeah. You know, and um, they said, hey, we're, start- we're, we're going to grow this company. And because I had flipping house, I've been flipping houses. I had a knack for like um, taking a house. It was like a creative kind of approach to taking a house. And I was really good at maximizing the value and flipping houses. Right. Nice houses like Los Feliz. For years. Yeah. I mean, we were, we got written up in the LA Times and uh, we had articles. You know, it, we were celebrated for it. And so I went in with them and it just went really well. You know, we grew this company huge. Um, we sold it to Goldman Sachs. Yeah. You know, wow. which was big. You know, I was an executive. I didn't even, I had never been in a boardroom. It's hard to me think right, of you as an executive. Right. Listen, me too. Yeah. So I had to present at my first boardroom. I didn't, I, I swear to God, this is a true story. I didn't know what to do. Eric yeah. Cooper, you know Eric Cooper? Mm-mm. He's a buddy. And I said, Eric, what am I going to do? I had hired Eric. You know, he goes, YouTube. So I started going. It was like I was studying for a part. Yeah. I was watching all these YouTube uh-huh. videos, how to be in a boardroom. And that's how I prepped for my first boardroom. Interesting. Have you? Did you go to college or any of that stuff? I like did. Formal I, education type You know, I went to like broken college. Like I went to LACC for a while and then I get a role. <laughs> I went right, to Valley right, College right. for a while and I was working right. through about three semesters and um, I got this film, which was actually also with Seth Green. I actually went for my MBA, you know, okay. uh, at Fort Collins. And that was cool. I learned a lot there. You know, that helped me the most probably, you know, Masters of Business. But the real world, there's nothing. Being around kind of a higher level peer group and executives, especially when you're an actor mm-hmm. and you're creative, yeah. you pick up on things really quick and yeah. it's really just about you know, how do successful people do successful things in a successful way, right? And it worked. I mean, look, I mean, that company we did, we 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 became the premier national company in the country. You know, they only kept four people, Goldman Sachs, on the executive you, team, and I was one of them. Were you somehow. buying properties? We were lending basically developers money to do construction, but Got only it. like the idea was we're going to go to just the best in every city, guys who donate story buildings, you know, like, 300 houses. And I'm supposed to be the expert. I didn't know what the hell I was saying. But it's okay. I learned. You're good at that though. You're good at like, yeah. you're good at that. But you That's, know, it's like studying for a part. I swear yeah. to God, like, you know, if you're astute and you like to learn and you're interested, you know, we carved a path that like we traded Goldman Sachs and then Goldman Sachs five years later traded us again. I mean, it was a big trade and we got bought by a company called Fortress and Rhythm, which is a $35 billion um, holding company. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Reap. And that went on. I was with them until about 2021, something like that. Yeah. And let's talk about your other yeah. your other pet project, the barrel. The barrel. Yeah. The barrel. Me and my brother always wanted to own a bar. Yeah. I knew you I knew that you know? was coming. Yeah. So we uh we were trying to buy this bar. I mean, this crappy dive bar. People were getting sad there. Yeah. But we loved it. So this you is know? the barrel tavern. Barrel tavern. It's in Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks. Yeah. Um, and me and my brother, you know. It's kind of like a cheers vibe. Like yeah. the same 30, 40 people are always there. And it was great. And me and my brother wanted to buy it. And the guy Which said, brother? Scotty. Yeah. And the guy was like, I'll never sell you this. I could die and you won't get it. And he died. He fucking died. That's what he had. And he, you manifested yeah. that. <laughs> Poor guy. Allegedly. And, but the daughter sold the liquor license. <gasps> so my brother and I, it was actually a cool story. Wow. The owner of the building. And what year is this? This is 2019. So the owner of the building originally opened the bar and he had sold it to this guy in the nineties and this guy ran into the ground. I mean, the Dodgers used to go in this yeah. place. It was a cool spot back in the 60s, 70s. So my brother and I bought the building mm-hmm. and I knew if we got a license, as long as you have the building, yep. you have a bar. Yep. So we entered this lottery for a liquor license. We won it mm-hmm. and we bought the building. We fixed it up and it's just awesome. It's like a clubhouse. We have music. Mondays are, uh, we turn into like a music venue. Okay? Oh my gosh. So I, we, we have, go check this out. We oh, have yeah. a live 
uh, Grateful Dead Band every Monday. Yeah. It's packed. It's awesome. Tuesday, we have an open mic music. We have like 10 to 15 artists get up and sing two to three songs every Tuesday. Awesome. Different artists. We have bands on Saturdays. We have karaoke and DJs. You got to get uh, What's the Corey Feldman to uh, perform. He wants to, man. <laughs> he does. But, yeah. you know, he's doing big shows now. He's, you got to get him, dude. He's been texting me like he's doing these big shows. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I missed the window. Where's Where's this bar? So it's at 4547 Van Nuys. It's in Sherman Oaks. Cross at, Street. Moore Park. There you go. Yeah, it's, right, just, um, it's just uh, south of pizza. the 405. I know exactly. You guys, we grew up in hot. It's think Borders. I've been to your place. It's oh, like love, Borders yeah. of the 90s, but it's in the valley with music. I yeah, it's, you know? I, I love all of those things. Cool people. And let me safe, ask you this: you know? Do you get uh, you know a lot of that 80s, 90s actors? crowd come in there ever i mean people you've oh yeah i mean well it depends well, everyone lives in the valley <laughs> everybody did always live in the valley it's interesting you get a lot of different people um kevin bacon ironically was in there with Kier Cedric. oh wow like um uh, i think it was like a month ago yeah ironically didn't know i owned it or anything anything no yeah, were you there that's awesome no they came in in the afternoon to watch the oh, games and have a couple crazy. beers yeah. um, and you know uh a lot of people roll through there yeah in fact, this one guy rolled in, this old guy comes in. I'm, I'm with my brother. We don't know how to run the bar. We yeah. just hang out there. And we weren't really open. This guy goes, are you open? We're like, yeah, come in, old timer. What do you yeah. want? He goes, I shot a lot of porn in here. <laughs> like, he did. He goes, I love it. I shot like 30 movies in those booths. I go, not those booths. We changed the booths. <laughs> That's hysterical. I know about the porn yeah. that went down in this place. Oh, play. my God. I That's love awesome. That. That's awesome. Boogie Nights. Um, just, so when you transitioned out of acting, mm -hmm. I mean, what... You Was don't transition out of anything. Wait, wait. Acting puts you on a bus. <laughs> okay. When the bus left the station, yeah. how what what age are we talking? And then how quickly did you well, transition actually, into is, like a you business? You want to hear something man. really funny? 2015, mm -hmm. January, I come back from shooting these three movies called Mythica. One, two, or three. Probably the best role I've ever done. It was Game of Thronesy. Right, right. And um I was so excited and I came home with like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. No money. I was gone for three and a half months. I'm like, oh my gosh, this isn't working for me. And that year is when I got asked to join the company. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, you know, they were paying me a lot of money. I mean, a lot, okay? And I was like, you know, I never even made that much acting. But here's the funny part. So, the movies become like the number two sci-fi movie. Yeah. Like on cable. Huh? And at work, nobody knew I was an actor. Yeah. Wow. And I get recognized I, a lot, yeah. but not from them because they work so much. These finance guys, like they don't watch TV. I feel yeah. like people probably are like, "Don't I know you? Like, are, are you? Were you at my cousin's wedding?" Always, it's always <laughs> been that. So he yeah. has yeah. a familiar face. He has because well, he works. A, he was on yeah. every you know show. And, like, listen, if you're our age and you watched TV in the 80s and 90s, yeah. you had to see Bobby. And they go, and all that, and all that. Well, and Billy, and he looks like. Is I saw something because Billy was on Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Yeah, with Corky. Oh, I love and that so movie. and, and I'm clicking through something that came up on Instagram or whatever, and it's like, where are they now? And yeah. it's Taj and, and Corin and and Abe and Ruby. And then it's like Billy, Billy, where's Billy? And it's your picture. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know what yeah. you know what Billy got you know, he did all those Bud Light commercials with Jeremy Renner. Okay. I don't know if you know that. Like, no, he's they, also a I do, like that sounds vaguely familiar when he you did say like it. these 10 Bud Light commercials and he got really famous yeah. from it again. Yeah. And then Billy became a commercial director. Yeah. He directed oh, nice. a lot of commercials. Yeah. So that's what he's doing now. Directing. Yeah. Cool. So after all of this, like, the, the, you know, you've been acting on and off for the past 20 years, correct? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got okay. it. Yeah, 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 I want to hear it. No, wait. Here's, here's the funny part. At some point, like for a while, nobody realized I was like an actor, and I was—I had all this credibility. I mean, I yep. became an executive at yep. the company. You know, I'm one of the four guys that go through to Goldman, and everybody gets left behind except for me and these three and the CEO. I had a business and uh, head of sales. And at some point, as we we grew the company from 40 to like 180 FTEs, right, full time uh -huh. employees, the younger people—not younger, but the people in the middle—start yep. going, "Hey, man, I know that," and everybody starts to figure it out. Yep, and it got really weird. <laughs> because then it came on, it was coming on cable and people started yeah. to put it together. Yeah. And it actually became kind of a weird That's thing, you know, yeah. a credibility kind of. Sure. Or maybe it was a personal thing too. Like, I don't know. Right. But that was a weird thing, that transition. And it was probably more me than anybody else. But, yeah. But getting over that and living with that, I, as it got further away, because look, that's what, that was in 15. So that's like. Yeah. Nine years ago. Oh yeah. my God. Right. Jesus so now it's long enough away where yeah. it look, doesn't look like me, but it's weird when it's me. But and are I'm, you not yeah. working at all anymore as an actor? No, I mean, I produced a few things. Yep. 
look, what's interesting is I'm in, you know, business with a lot of huge equity capital mm -hmm. firms, mm -hmm. big firms, right? All the capital sources you could ever want, making movies that have never been involved in movies. A lot of my friends I grew up with are now established, either producers or making mm -hmm. film. You know, I do think a lot about um, putting some films together. Yeah. And if I did, I would be in it. That's the only way. Yeah. Now's the time. I mean, and you know what's interesting too I learned in business? I think a lot of actors could learn something from this. It's great to create a vehicle. It's great to write a script. It's great to direct something. The problem is I think we're very myopic and we think it's about us. And I think what happens is, is as we're trying to finance it or sell it, we're too centric to the success. And I think it turns off, you know, getting that full buy-in from whatever it is that you need to make it happen. And my biggest learning was if I were to do it again, I would think about it more like a business. I would think about creating some kind of a, a film structure, television structure that had financing, had acting, had a great script, and I just happened to be in it. Yeah. As opposed to it being about me. And that's yeah. what I would tell actors, writers, directors who are creating a vehicle. Make it where it's about the vehicle mm -hmm. that's going to happen no matter what. Yep. And you just want to be part of it. Yep. Not it's about you and it's your chance mm -hmm. to do your Picasso. Like, who the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that, like the, the the people that have been successful at that do treat it a little bit more like that too. I think so. You know, there's still, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, otherwise they got to buy you, which right. might work. I don't know. Right. It works for some people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that'd be my answer to that. I, yes, is the answer, you know. You know. I talk to Seth about stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, he's doing a lot of stuff. He's done a great job of kind of making his own projects happen. Did yeah. he get his NFT back? Oh, I don't know. The monkey? <sighs> He had a whole show so fucked up. Even so, him, man. Hey, I even look, got yeah. into that world for a hot minute. I was like, what? Yeah. People look at him like he had it easy. Like, yeah. nobody wanted um, the claymation show. The, yeah. the, the, uh, the Robot Chicken. The oh, Robot Chicken. Yeah. He had to sell that thing. Yeah. That's my friend's show. Who? That's just that that's, that's But the, the yeah. um, Shadow Machine. That's my friend's company. I mean, think about it. They, the they were selling these like 30 second vignettes of things in the 80s. Like, yeah. it's weird, right? And he was saying, like, and they had to get it done, man. And he got it done. Yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, people miss how hard it is. He's a hustler. He's been a hustler. You got to be a hustler. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hate when people say I work hard. You got to work hard, Did man. Did you ever see um, mm. Dave's uh, crack? Grave diggers work hard. Grave diggers yeah. work hard. I mean, you know. No, it's true. I mean, you got to work hard. You, everything is a hustle. Everything is sales and production, period. Did you, you ever see um, Dave's crackle show, Starving? Did you ever see that? I saw something. He was naked. I saw one. I couldn't watch it. So, but that's a great, <laughs> no, so a great funny. episode that <laughs> Seth was on. He had, a lot of great people were on that show. Um, he's in Married with Children and he plays. Yeah. So, so, yeah. and, uh, and, and Brennan Thick is coming on our podcast in another episode. Uh -huh. And Alan, was, there was a great episode called Stealing Alan Thick, but uh, there was an episode where they did a reboot of Married with Children. And Dave, you know, in, in it, Dave plays a parody of himself and he's a broke actor. And he has no money. And Corin is is like roommate, you know, and he's more broke than, if, in fact, one of the taglines is, remember uh, Parker Lewis can't lose? Well, he did lose. Okay. You know, that was like one of the lines. They decide they're going to, so it, Corin comes running in with variety and the headline is, Married with Children back on the air, right? And Dave is so excited because now this is going to be his chance to be, mm -hmm. you know, back on the air. And um, he goes to the cast, you know, table read, right? And Ed is there. And Katie is there and Christina is there, except they've hired Seth to play Bud Bundy. <laughs> and Seth is there. It's great. It's it's really great. That's it's really, funny. Really, really funny. Do you know that happened to me in real life? What? It was it was a movie called Clara's Heart, but they changed the name. Yeah, it, yeah. Neil Patrick, Neil, Neil Patrick, Harris. Patrick Harris. Yeah. It was his first movie. Yeah. When I showed up to the table read, I was reading that part. Okay. Ruben Cannon was the caster. I'll never forget. Yeah. And I was reading that I was that part. Yeah. And I'll never forget this. Hey, hey. Can you move over to that side of the table? Yeah. Oh, and listen, you're going to read the role of Eddie. Yeah. Eddie, no, I'm reading. And Neil Patrick here rolls in. You know what's funny? That's actually That's what happened so for me for Pump of Volume. No way. I swear to God. The guy who had my part was actually a black kid. And he came to the first day of the shoot. He was totally unprepared. I don't think he had his work permit oh. or any of this stuff. And they, I got the call. We're bumping you up. You're, you're, you're moving up in the world. And that's what happened. So kind of opposite, but the same thing called the volume. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Work for, you know, I actually got Critters. Critters? Like remember, the horror remember, movie? Was Scott Grimes. Critters? Yeah. 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 I got the part. Yeah. But I was 13. Yeah. 
and Scott was 14. Yeah. Oh, he could work longer hours. And I don't know what happened. Yeah. Somebody made a phone call. You know what's funny? Is, I mean, as much as you worked and you worked on everything, <laughs> I mean, there right. must have been so many like almost or near added, misses. Near yeah. misses. Yeah, yeah. How do you navigate that as a kid though? I mean, that, like I, I did the whole acting thing for a bit and I'll be quite honest, <clears throat> the rejection aspect of it fucking sucks. Like I did not like it at all. You know, it's like crack, right? Like I also remember being, sitting in that room and you look around. I, there was that one movie I, I did, was, it was called uh, Day My Parents Ran Away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was older and, you know, it was important to me. I was in my 20s, you know, and I remember John, uh, it was Vonnie Rabisi and Breck and Meyer. Like people are, I respected, you know, and I forget who else. And like you go in the room and you read and then they say, hey, can you wait a second? And everybody goes home. That high of knowing you got it is big, but the rejection is pretty bad. I hated that. Or like you go for roles that you know you're not good at. I, I remember going to network and like forgetting my line or it wasn't, I knew I wasn't yeah. funny at it. Yeah. You have 30 people in the room and yeah. That's a I mean, lot of pressure for a kid. And also were you guys, and I'm just going back to this because, you know, it's like kind of coming full circle. Were you part of like taking care of the family too or no? Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, the kids were the breadwinners. Yeah. You know, so when um, it was like you didn't get it, it was like even more pressure. No. How was your mom about um, that stuff? Yeah. My, well, the thing is, like, like I said, my mom always thought she was like living homeless in New York, <laughs> and we were like living in Los Feliz yeah. in a really nice house, yeah. right? But like, we'd have like the flushing New York metal like awnings or something, or like she'd drive the old Chrissy, like that. We were lucky, like, they weren't extravagant right. spenders. Um, so we were lucky. I mean, she did, she did have us all go to court and stand up, and you know, because you're supposed to save money. Yeah, the Jackie Coogan one. Yeah, exactly. that's why they got in the fight. Yeah, that's why Jackie oh Coogan got in the fight with her. Yeah, because um, Keith Coogan, yeah. Keith Coogan's grandpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the Jackie Coogan law was because Jackie Coogan was a child actor. His parents took all the money. Yeah. So now in California, or I don't know if it's just California or not, but. If kids work, your parents are only allowed to take a certain amount yeah. for living expenses or as a manager, but the rest all has to be put away. Yeah. Unless you go to court with your mother and you stand up before the judge with a rehearsed speech <laughs> and tell the judge how much you need the money. And then you guys got the money. <laughs> Somebody did. Yeah. I'd sleep over at Dan's house when I was first meeting him. Always so generous. They'd all be sleeping and I'd wake up early and his mom would always be like, come here. Come here. And she'd open up the fridge and there was always cream cheese yep. and bagels. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But Good he, bagels. But here's what was cool about to this day, I always remember that feeling. So whenever my kids have friends over, yep. I swear it's true to your I mom. Appreciate it. I always say I always want to have the fridge packed. I always try to put stuff, you know, make yep. it look like it's just waiting. And yep. be like, help yourself. Yep. I never forgot that. She was so sweet. She was like, come here. Yeah. No, my mom loved Bobby. Love Bobby. There's a few that my mom loved. Bobby was one of them. No, look, I I'll tell you this. It was definitely interesting to learn to work in an adult environment as a kid. It was challenging to make friends. Although I did go to the school called Apple School. You remember Soleil? Yeah, of course. Wasn't that Excelsior or it turned into No, Excelsior? that was the one in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah of course. Like, that, that and like that was kids. a whole other. So yeah. Soleil Moon Fry, who was <laughs> so, Brewster. She was, so her brother Mino, did, yeah, Mino was in Bad News Bears with and, my brother and right. Corey Fulman. Yeah, Mino worked a lot too. And actually Christoph St. John who passed away, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and so, they have the same thing too with like did you know their dad, Virgil Fry? Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they have the same thing where, like, Sandra had, I don't know, there was, like, multiple kids, different dads. Oh, yeah, yeah, them, yeah. the Livelys. You know, yeah. I grew up with Robin Lively, you know, yeah. Blake's yeah. sister, yeah. Yeah. Jason yeah. Lively. Yeah. He She's was, in my favorite movie, yeah. Teen Witch. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you know Jason? I he, don't. He was in Vacation. He was Rusty. Oh, but not, well, it was Anthony Michael Hall. He was in, he was in European Vacation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But kind so, hey. Always in her house in Burbank and her mom. And they always like, so they, her mom was always welcome so, to come to the house. So what's interesting is like, there was this school and, you know, because I think we went there because of them. Beck went there. Yep. So many kids went there that were actors. It was really interesting. And that felt a little normal, you yep. know, because all the kids were acting, you yep. know. But other than that, it was hard traveling. You know, you shouldn't be a 15-year-old kid around alcohol and on sets. <laughs> It takes away the boundaries a bit, but like, look, I mean, it gave me a life. Um, it gave me lifelong friendships. Yep. I think it um, exposed me 
to a lot of success where I felt programmed for it, you know? But I do think, you know, look, Corey Feldman gets a bad rap, you know, for a lot of things, okay? And maybe some of it's deserved, you know, I don't know, I won't be the judge. I don't think he's got enough attention for some of the stuff he tried to shine a light on, you know? It, it was real, yeah. and it's still real, you know? Kids have to be protected. Talking about his movie? Yeah, about did, did, is this movie pedophiles. Out? Yeah, and, is this movie out? Yeah, it did. You know, it came out. Yeah. I actually went to the premiere. Yeah. And you know I hung out with? Who? Who's the porn star guy that just pleaded insane and he got Ron out Jeremy. of it? Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron. Yeah, Ron. I have a great Ron Jeremy <laughs> story. Dude, I have a Wait great a Ron Jeremy story. It was story. me, Ron Jeremy, Corey Feldman. I swear, so at but, a pedophile premiere of this really Yeah, but he wasn't a pedophile movie. at that time. No, I know, but I, I have just, a great Ron Jeremy <laughs> story. Allegedly. So Ron Jeremy used to hang out at the Rainbow a lot, mm -hmm. like all the time. I mean, that was in the court case. And, yeah. and Ron was like, I don't know, like he worked, he was probably the most successful guy in the porn industry that you could possibly have. But Ron like wore the same t-shirt every day and like mm. he he drove this Such like piece swap. of shit Ford Fiesta. <laughs> but yet he had like 10 hot chicks hanging out with him all the time, you know? What a dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to come to parties at in Malibu, at the house in Malibu. So- I remember the parties at Nick's house. Yeah, that he oh. would come. So uh, he'd hang out the rainbow a lot and I'm there, I'm like maybe 18 years old and I'm having dinner with Dave and Bo and Ron Jeremy walks up to our table and he's like, what are you guys doing tomorrow? He, he's like, I'm shooting in the valley, come come out to the valley. And he was, he was actually directing, he was directing, he wasn't in it, but he was directing. So we come, we come out to this. I mean, it'd be weird if he's like, hey, come watch me. No, 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 he was directing. <laughs> so we come, we come out to the valley and, and um, you know, he lets us take whatever movies we yeah. want off the, they had like a whole warehouse of movies. And I remember this one it's actress, amazing. like she runs into her dressing room because she didn't want to meet Dave because she was going to hopefully work for him as, work with him as a, as a serious actress sometime, mm -hmm. you know? Look, I, I, I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of debauchery. Yeah. There was a lot, but there was also a lot of friendships, you know? Yeah. Well, really quickly, you, know? you started touching on Corey Feldman and I do think that's an important Corey, look at Corey Haim. I mean, that right. guy showed up here. He was a straight and narrow kid. Right. You know, out yeah. of Canada. Right. Yeah. Hey, you know? Right. And, you know, he went through some tough times. He got preyed on. Yep. You know, and he didn't make it. Yep. He self-destructed. Yeah. You know? Matthew it's Lawrence, wild. actually. We're lucky. You know, we're very lucky. Look. Recently Matt. said some stuff on, on, on. He did? Yeah. Like publicly on Instagram or something. He, he called something out and he was very yeah. open about it. Yeah. And I think that it's. In a in a strange way, not to get dark, but in a strange way, it's it's interesting that you're seeing that happen, and and the the men boys are coming out, you know what I mean? Mm. Like saying, "Hey, this is stuff that happened or could have well, happened." Well, you know, I, I was mean, around. I mean, you know, it really, yeah. there's a shame with it. I think, and like you know, luckily society is moving in a direction where you feel accepted to some degree. Yeah. You know, I think there's some people who are brave beyond their time and. Then there's other people who are, you know, maybe that's just the way society is going. That's how it should be because these guys should not be able to lurk in the shadows. No. And I think uh, back to Feldman, put all this stuff aside. I mean, the guy was pretty brave to come out. Some of the people he was going after were people that had some power. Yeah, yeah. you know, 100%. I mean, and to this day, he'll tell you that they try to stab him. They try to run him over. Right. Yeah. And, he, and some he, of the people that he called out were called out in other yeah. things totally. too, and, and And just to... Corey Feldman was a hell of an actor. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. he was a hell, and so was Corey Haim. Yeah. Lucas is still one of my favorite movies. Lucas was great. Which, you know, but it's, I just think it's interesting that, that you touched on that because I do think, you know, being a child actor, mm. there is so much adultification that happens. And then all of a sudden you're expected to operate in these circles that you, you don't have the maturity to handle. Yeah. Mm. And you're put in these situations. And even though I was not a child actor, I was around all the same shit. Yeah. You know, and like that's part of growing up in LA in Hollywood. You see stuff happening to, to and being around things at a young age, having your first drink at 10 and mm -hmm. smoking your first joint at 12 and stealing somebody's <laughs> car at 13. Yeah. Hey man, we used to, I mean, these were things I did, you know. Dave, like, Dave was always really generous. I mean, we used to go to the Roxbury when we were 15. Yeah, same. I mean, 15. Corky and Emic, I'll tell you something funny. One time, you know, I was just drinking a little bit. Yeah. And I don't know what, I got tired and uh, I was with him and my buddy Shannon. Remember Shannon? Of course I know Shannon. And Shannon was with me when I was 17 Corky, got my ear pierced. Corky had just got a brand new Alfa Romeo. Yeah, I remember. 
and he couldn't get insurance because he was wrecking them or something. Yeah, like he yeah. had just wrecked it. <laughs> yeah. So for some reason, I fell asleep in the back of the seat. It's like Quirky is Corin, Parker Lewis can't uh, lose, right? Yeah, so go ahead. So apparently some, they just thought it'd be really funny if I woke up in San Francisco. No <laughs> way. That's, that sounds like Corin. So, but unfortunately they fell asleep too going down the highway. And all I remember is hearing this, and I wake up and I look, Shannon's sleeping, Corn's sleeping and he's driving. Yeah. And there's like a semi and I remember he wakes up and he hits the brakes and we spin out, Jesus. wrecked, wrecked. Yeah, yeah, car. yeah. And I remember he wrecked, wrecked it. Yeah. It was like out of a movie. We're spinning and we're in the middle of the highway. It's like, it's only desert. Yeah. And there's a sign that says LA 184. And I'm like, What's happening, you guys? <laughs> and because they couldn't call a marker out, yeah. we had to drive the Alpha Mail on the rims for like an hour and a no half. No way. Oh. And pre cell phone. Um, no, we had a cell phone. We just, yeah. there was no exits. Yeah. Oh That's God. hysterical. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's, well, yeah. you've definitely had a very entertaining. It hasn't been that entertaining for a long time, but. No, you've you, had, know. you, you know, it's nice to relive some of these things, but it's also you've done well outside yeah. of that world, which I think not a lot of people go on to have such success. So that's great. You know, that's great for you. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was fun, man. It was a fun backdrop. It, it also helped growing up in a family of actors and being around other family of actors, like you mentioned, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, even David's brother was acting for a while. Yeah, Mike, you, you know, but you've transitioned well. You've really, you, you've done a woman. Well. Yes. Yes. To an adult is what I was getting at. Last but, year you're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. You, know, like, you, you, extra you really have 20 year you? lag. You really have. I, I mean, appreciate considering, that. Considering, I mean, considering all the pitfalls and obstacles and, and what could have happened, and 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 I mean, you really, really, really. Have it's sobering it. to watch people die. You know, it's sobering to see people um, get hurt, and you know, it's sobering, you know, to meet people who are actually succeeding in their life. And do there's it, a lot of people you know? who haven't been able to make that transition from yeah. being a kid star to being an adult yeah. in their life. They just haven't been able to. You gotta grow up. But anyway, look, man, I appreciate your friendship. I love um, you, you know, Robert Jane. It's been a ride. Just get started. Totally. I, yeah. I, I can't wait to ask more stories after we wrap this up. Oh, yeah. I, got some I, I know. I've got some off-air ones. I think our audience is going to be upset that we're like not Well, you know, there's maybe we'll get a Patreon site. But I do want to thank you so much for coming. I yeah. have very much enjoyed these stories. Okay. I love you. I, you're the best. You're, you're quite fun, and I appreciate you doing this as well. Tell you some stories about Dan when they turn off the mic. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. I know a few myself, which I'm scared because then, then, then there's retaliation. That's all good. Exactly. Anyway, thank you guys. This has been another episode of 90 Who I Know. Our guest today was Robert Jane otherwise known as Bobby Jacoby, which is his stage name. Check out some of his his features in Tremors and different strokes. Iron if Eagle. you can. Iron I got an Eagle. 8-track greatest hits to Maybe awesome. find out Outlaw Posse if there's yeah. like a, a an album in a bin somewhere. Um, but thank you again. And until our next episode, thank you guys so much for listening. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That's right. like and, and give subscribe. us some like, give us some love. We've, we've, we've seen that we have an audience now. It's great. We'll see you next time.